When we talk about the idea of taking this message to um, communities, and you know, New York City is, I guess, an excellent um, example, and some might say it's an excellent challenge for you in terms of trying to get this message out. How do you reach out to people in so many different areas who might be impacted by this? Well, we're doing it in, in multiple ways. First of all, we have the website. But second of all, we have started with uh, the development of some public service announcements that will be um, seen more and more often. And they are produced, um, or they're, they're featuring rather um, athletes, professional athletes so far, that have asthma and have been such great inspirations. It can be such great inspirations to, to young people out there. And then finally, um, we're going to be doing these uh, Winning with Asthma workshops, proving to, um, to young people out there, as well as their parents and their coaches, that it is, uh, asthma shouldn't be a stigma. It's a myth that, um, that young people with asthma can't exercise and that they can't even, that they can't achieve success, even at the highest level of competition. So these Winning with Asthma workshops will be actually in person at some schools starting in the fall and the, and the winter, and then we'll have, um, a webinar, actually, um, we're developing an online parent education project with Power to Learn through Cablevision, which is a community-focused learning arm of Cablevision that's expected to launch in the fall and winter of 2008. Hmm. So it's many different ways in which you seek to get this information out. When you talk about the elite athletes, um, in some cases, stepping forward and you know, talking about the fact that they have asthma, what does that mean in terms of helping to get this message out, especially to the young people who very often are so impressed by athletes and professional athletes these days? I think it means a tremendous amount. I think it's a very key piece of this program because uh, I think that young athletes and, and celebrities who have asthma can really influence and inspire young people these days. What would you say is the greatest myth or myths about asthma? I, I believe that the greatest myth about asthma is that it has that it will affect your lifestyle and that it will affect your living from day to day and that it can affect your ability to play sports or even exercise and uh, that is exactly what I'm trying to shoot down it's um, it really with the right treatment and good asthma control really the sky's the limit and in terms of the that young people are involved in playing, are there some sports that would be more affected than others when it comes to having concerns about participating? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, the highly aerobic, high ventilation endurance sports such as basketball and hockey and soccer and long distance running, for example, where athletes or where the young person would breathe at a very high level and dry out the airways. The, the spasm that occurs in the airways of people that do have an exercise-induced asthma component occurs due to drying out of the airways um, and then causing the airways to become very irritable and go into spasm. There, that, that occurs um, more often in the highly aerobic, high ventilation endurance sports. Um, it also occurs much more commonly in cold weather sports for a similar reason, where the airways are dried out a lot faster. So, for example, when one out of four elite athletes at the high school and college and Olympic level may have asthma, as many as 50% of elite cross-country skiers have exercise-induced asthma, and that's because of the cold air component. So those sports are great, you know, have a greater asthma associated with them. Stop and go sports use short energy spurts like baseball, football, volleyball, short track and field events, certainly gymnastics. They're much less likely to trigger asthma. But having said that, you can even be a fantastic basketball player, hockey player, long distance runner, and we've involved some of these athletes with the Breathe Easy Play Hard Foundation already and they have been tremendously successful by just controlling their asthma. 
Hey, we're going to talk more about this whole idea of being physically active with uh, asthma. This is some good information contained on the website as well. We'll take a pause in our discussion with you, Dr. Schaefer. Dr. Janice Schaefer is talking with us on our program. She's the founder of the Breathe Easy Play Hard Foundation. And we turn our attention at 741 this Sunday morning. Mr. Minko, who has our latest 2020 sports update. Mr. We're in discussion with Dr. Janice Schaefer on our program. Dr. Schaefer is a pediatric pulmonologist. Uh, she founded the Breathe Easy Play Hard Foundation, which is at breatheeasyplayhard.com. And she is sharing with us in our discussion here on FAN this Sunday morning. There are so many different areas where we can go in our discussion. What I mentioned earlier, too, is uh, in this final portion of our chat with you, what we'll try to do is if we have somebody who um, has some thoughts in this area of some things that you've shared with us and would like to share those uh, on the air, you can join us at 718-937-6666 here at the fan this Sunday morning. Uh, before we pause for our sports update and messages, I mentioned that um, one of the things that I discovered on uh, the website that I wanted to talk about was this idea of, and it follows perfectly on what we were talking about before we uh, pause for our uh, sports update and messages, the idea of being physically active for people with uh, asthma and uh, the whole idea to the proper approach when one is going to exercise with asthma, and this gets into something that is often talked about when you to beginning an exercise, one of the very key things is the whole idea of preparation, isn't it, Doctor? That's correct, and that is one of the things that we really promote and breathe easy, play hard. Preparation is key, and it's uh, you know it's epitomized by the athletes that do have asthma now that are in Beijing competing. Mm -hmm. They have to be completely prepared with an asthma treatment plan and have a backup plan in case their asthma symptoms break through. And they have to take many other precautions, but if they do that, they will be successful. I mean, they can, and that's the whole point. They can win with asthma. You know, the better the athlete's state of physical condition, the better the asthma will be controlled. And the better the asthma control, the better the athlete's performance. So it's a, you know, continuing cycle. The better you control your asthma, the better you'll do, and, um, and then have less breakthrough asthma symptoms. So, Preparation and good control of asthma by following your treatment plan is key. How long a period of warm-up do you recommend, or is there a uniform recommendation that can be given? You know, I think it's best to, um, after taking, if, if, it, if it's advised that you take a preventive, in, preventative inhaler prior to exercise, at least a 10, 5 to 10 minute vigorous warm-up routine before starting exercise is important. This serves uh, basically to warm up the muscles and begin to open up the airways prior to the start of vigorous exertion. 